extending on the uh, previous talk about Make OSI, uh, and specifically how I use it to test the uh, hyperscale system debug port. So who, are me, uh, who am I? Uh, I'm uh, Dan, I work at uh, Meta on the Linux user space team, and uh, I'm a maintainer of systemd, and I'm the primary maintainer of uh, Make OSI itself. So why do we want to do this? Um, we maintain a backport of systemd in the hyperscale SIG because we want to get newer versions of systemd faster than uh, they are provided in CentOS itself. Um, and of course, when I build these uh, backports, I need a way to uh, test them, of course. It's not sufficient to just run the unit test. We need to actually boot the uh, boot with systemd, uh, check if everything is working correctly uh, before we actually publish the release. Um, of course, when I do this testing, I very often run into bugs or stuff that needs to be fixed, either in the RPM spec or in uh, systemd itself. So I need a, a proper way to basically have a quick turnaround time. I, I wanna be able to quickly rebuild systemd, uh, quickly do a fix, build again, install it, get it boot into an image, and check if my fix is working. If it isn't, do the whole process over again. And I want quick turnaround time. So I don't wanna wait like 20 minutes for a complete rebuild of systemd when, uh, when I rebuild the RPM. I wanna be able, I want to cache as much as possible so that uh, within a minute or two, or maybe just a minute, I can get into a VM uh, again and test my fix. And of course, I, I also wanna be able to not just test whatever system, the RPM that I built locally, I also wanna pull, uh, be able to pull in the, uh, either like the stock CentOS system D, so I can compare it against the one from Hyperscale. I wanna get into a VM with the one from Hyperscale. And we also do uh, the uh, system CD, so we build nightly builds of system D from Git main. Uh, and I also want to be able to just add the repo for that, install that one, see if it works, see if something's broken, try to reproduce the bug. And I want to be able to do that all as quickly as possible. So uh, let's quickly dive into how you can use Make OSI for development. Um, we have a bunch of settings. This was originally, like, originally Make OSI was designed by Leonard Puttering for uh, hacking on systemd. So uh, he added a bunch of stuff for that. It's mostly stayed the same over the years, but there's a few settings that we can use. So uh, most of it is built around testing low-level user software. So um, most of your testing for any the kind of project you do, you can just do from your host system and it's perfectly safe, especially if it's something that's like web-based, you just uh, spawn it on uh, some port, 8080, you can just go to there via localhost and uh, or you can use maybe Docker Compose or something. But you can mostly do the testing from your host system. But with something like systemd, um, there's already systemd on your system running. You can't just replace it. Uh, even if you manage to replace it, if you wrote a bug in PIT1 and systemd crashes, then suddenly your laptop is unusable. So you need to do the testing in a VM, or otherwise you're gonna run into a, a lot of pain. So that's why uh, the development use case for Make OSI was implemented, so that you can quickly build a VM with the latest systemd or any other project that you wanna build and get into a safe environment for testing. If something is broken, it doesn't matter, you kill the VM, you build again and it's as if nothing ever happened. Um, of course, we wanna be able to build this image as quickly as possible because otherwise development just becomes a pain. Um, so that's why we have like uh, the, the uh, well first of all a build script so that you can build uh, whatever software you want and install it into the image. Um, but you can also configure a build directory so that that can be used by whatever build software that the project uses, so CMake or Mison or whatever it uses that as the build directory, and you, uh, whenever you do a subsequent build, it just uses the incremental build results from that directory, and you don't have to rebuild from scratch. Um, you can configure where the sources are with build sources, so systemd, the source tree can be anywhere on your system, you can just use build sources to point at it, and it will be mounted at the expected location for the build script. Um, and the other one is build packages, of course, like you have your regular packages that you want installed into the image, but you also have your build dependencies that are needed to run the build script, but you don't need in the final images. So instead of just specifying the regular packages, you specify build packages, and those packages will end up, uh, not end up in the final image, but they will be available for the build script. Uh, and then once you have that, you can basically build the systemd or any other project from source and install it. Uh, but you can also then customize the final image using the extra trees and the post-installation script. 
you can add configuration files, add testing files, like add a one-off service that you want to do for some testing or anything you can think of really. Um, and then of course, with the build directory, our build script is fast because it's incremental, but we also want to make the image build itself incremental. Otherwise, we have to install all the RPMs from scratch again every time, and once you have a big image, RPM takes a little while to do its job. So if you enable the incremental setting, we do that once, we cache it, and as long as the packages don't change, we'll just uh, basically copy the cache instead of our installing the RPMs from scratch. And we use, like, we, we make use of uh, ref links and better, snaps, better FS snapshots if they're available to make that copy as fast as possible. So we can get immediately to running the build script again instead of having to install the RPMs from scratch again. So this basically allows you to get into a pretty quick turnaround time for hacking on systemd. It just runs the build script again, it's all cached, um, you get your image and you can boot into it. Uh, yeah, this is like basically what you get when you run it uh, in the, uh, for, for QAMU. So yeah, we don't just support this for, for CentOS or Fedora, we support this for Debian, Ubuntu, and uh, Arch Linux and OpenSUSE as well. So um, you can get a systemd build from Git main for any of the distributions and do your changes, or uh, test your changes. Um, yeah, there's a demo, but uh, there was already one in the previous talk, so I guess I'll skip it if I can. Right, so yeah, the demo was just what was already shown in the previous talk. Um, so now let's get into building RPMs. So what I explained previously was all about building systemd directly using uh, Meson, because that's systemd's build, uh, build system. But for the hyperscale backboard, I don't want to build systemd using Meson. I want to test that the RPM will, uh, works directly. So I want to build the RPM, of course. So let's see how we can do this. Um, there's a few different parts to building an RPM. So first you need the dependencies, of course. Uh, then you need to do the actual RPM build, and then you need to uh, install the RPM into the image that you just built. So um, getting the dependencies basically means we look at the spec file and we uh, try to get them using, uh, in this case, RPM spec. Um, there's two stages to the prepare script that you can use to install dependencies which are cached. Um, one for the final image and one for uh, build dependencies that don't end up in the final image. And these map very nicely to the requires and build requires options of uh, RPM spec. Uh, then we need to run RPM build and um, make OSI prepare as a uh, local repository for either RPMs or dApps or the Arch Linux packages, which you, the build script can put RPMs or whatever in there and they'll become available to install in uh, a post installation script, for example, uh, which we do, we do just that. So let's look a little bit in more detail at uh, these specific scripts. So this is the prepare script where we uh, invoke RPM spec. Um, specifically to run RPM spec, you need to define a few uh, macros. So you need to tell it where your uh, RPM source files are located so that, um, I don't think it actually needs them to figure out the dependencies, but uh, there's just some requirement in RPM that the source files can be found to run RPM spec. So you need to set that. You need to set the current working directory where it can put its random files. Uh, and then you need to pass it the spec, of course, and which uh, dependencies you want. And one interesting thing is, is that you, if you try to get the runtime dependencies with uh, dash dash requires, you will also get the um, dependencies between the sub packages if your RPM spec has them. So the systemd spec has a few of those. It has um, systemd resolve, the network, the uh, repart, and a few other ones. And you'll also get those dependencies in the RPM spec output. But of course, those will be like tied to the version that you're going to build. So they aren't available. So they need to be filtered out, otherwise DNF will just fail saying it can't find the dependencies. Um, I haven't found a good way to do this, uh, except for just crapping on the package name to filter them out. Uh, usually every sub package will have the package name itself in it. So it's a decent way to filter out things, but it's not always gonna work. Uh, I would love if there was a better solution available. Maybe there is, and someone can tell me later. Um, we'll see. And then of course we pass these to DNF install. Note that this script runs in a sandbox on the host system, but RPM spec can't actually operate on a different directory than the uh, host file system. So while RPM has a dash dash root argument, so you can have it operate on any directory with an RPM 
uh, or on, on any root FS with a, an RPM database in it, that doesn't actually work for RPM spec because it will always look up the RPM macros on the host system, even if you pass it the dash dash root argument. So we need to uh, change root into the image itself and run RPM spec in there to make sure it looks at the right RPM macros. Otherwise, you run into tons of weird issues. Um, of course, we only run RPM spec in the image, but we actually run DNF on the host. You might think, huh, won't we install all the dependencies on the host then? Well, make OSI, when you run it, uh, one of its scripts, it actually intercepts any call to DNF or other package managers and uh, makes it operate on the image instead of on the host file system. So anything we pass to DNF install here gets installed into the image. Now, anyone that's familiar with uh, RPM will probably think that RPM spec on its own isn't sufficient anymore to get the dependencies. You also need to handle dynamic build requires. To do that, you basically have to run RPM build in a loop with a dash BD switch, and it will uh, generate you a new RPM each time with uh, build requires dependencies, which are the dynamic build requires. You keep doing that until there's no more dynamic build requires left, and then you're done. And each time there are still dynamic build requires, it will exit with 11 instead of zero. So that's basically what we do here. We keep running it until we get no more dynamic build requires, and then um, we install all of those with DNF build app. Um, unfortunately, this works on Fedora. This does not work on CentOS Stream 9 because the dash BD switch is not available in the RPM on uh, CentOS Stream 9. It was added in the release just after the one that got included in CentOS Stream 9. I opened an issue on, um, on the Red Hat Jira. Uh, I used the CentOS Stream tag. I did not use the rel tag, so sorry, Troy. Um, Someone told me that uh, I should put it under the rel tag, so I did that. Uh, unfortunately, they closed it because there was not a business use case. So, uh, well, it it's not possible on CentOS Stream. But it will be in 10. Then we have the build script. This is basically where we need to invoke RPM build to actually build the uh, RPM. So, yeah, we do just as. Um, the arguments are mostly the same as RPM spec. We only set the RPM there to make sure that our Build RPMs get put into the directory where MakeOSI will build its local repository of RPM packages from. Um, we use the build and place flag, so this is the, the magic that makes it all work. Uh, when you specify that to RPM build, it will use the current working directory as the uh, provider of the sources instead of trying to unpack a tarball or whatever as the sources. So this is how you can get RPM build to build from a local git checkout of systemd instead of trying to use the uh, unpack a tarball uh, containing the ofi uh, official sources. So um, we use that. And then there's the vpad build their mac macro, and that is the, the meson build directory that uh, RPM will use. So if we set that to the build directory uh, that makeOSI exposes, we get our caching, so we get our incremental builds. And we disable LTO because um, that makes the build rather slow. Uh, and of course, we need to do a, a little bit of um, RPM spec patching. So we want the version and the release to always be newer. So we get the version from the systemd meson file, and we make sure our release is always newer by simply including the date in it. So this way, our locally built RPM will always win in dependency re re resolution uh, over the uh, one shipped by the distribution. Well, and we do patch the sources here, so usually that's fine in an RPM spec or whatever, uh, because the sources are thrown away after the build is done, but this is not the case here. But luckily, MakeOSI has a setting, build sources ephemeral, which means that every change to the sources while running the build script is simply thrown away afterwards, so you can change whatever you want, and it'll be gone when the build script is finished. Uh, and then we have to install it, and that's just as simple as DNF upgrade. Um, you can also do DNF install best or whatever. Uh, it's just uh, a local repository that's made available. So all you have to do is DNF install and uh, it will pick up the local RPM that we just built. Now, usually you're done with that, but um, systemd is special because it also runs in the inner MFS and it doesn't run just run in the final system. Uh, and in MakeOS, we don't use Drake to build the uh, inner MFS from the host file system, but we just run makeOSI itself again to produce the inner MFS. So we have a CPIO output, uh, so we just 
run it again, give it the CPAO output, install systemd and udev, and you get an NRMFS, and it works just as well as Prakit almost. Um, we have a separate talk about this at Falstam, uh, so you can uh, come uh, take a look there, and me and Shibishek will uh, give you a lot more information about uh, using MakeOSI to build in a RAMFS images. In this case, we want our local system, the RPM, to also end up in the inner RAMFS. So we can use the inner.d include setting to modify the inner RAMFS a little bit. And all we do is include another post installation script where we also run DNF upgrade. And that's all that's necessary. Uh, our locally built RPM will end up in the inner RAMFS and um, we'll have it available there as well for testing. SE Linux, so because we introduced a new RP, uh, system, the backport, we also need to make sure it works with SE Linux. To test that, I uh, install a bunch of debugging packages for SE Linux. Uh, I set enforcing to zero so the system doesn't fail to boot if we get denials. Uh, you can disable the don't audit um, denials so that you get absolutely everything and SE Linux doesn't hide denials from you then uh, we, all those denials get locked to the system D journal, so you can filter this out with, uh, the, by grabbing for AVC. And then you pipe that to audit to allow, and you get a, uh, a script that basically allows everything that was denied. Uh, then you go over that output to make sure you're not uh, allowing questionable stuff. Uh, and then you can put that in an SC Linux policy module, and uh, that's how you can make system D work with um, change or without having to modify the policy itself. Now, we really don't like doing this. We wanna be able to backport changes from the Fedora policy to the CentOS policy so that we can uh, not have to, so that we don't have to maintain like a separate add-on policy module, which is generally just a pain to do. And we don't know enough about LC Linux to know that all the changes we do are correct. So I would much prefer backporting changes from the official Fedora policy. But unfortunately, this is rather hard because the uh, SE Linux Git repo for CentOS uh, stream is not public. So please make that public and please allow contributions so that uh, I can do those backports. Uh, and then there's SE Linux in the NRD, so I've always found it interesting that the policy is loaded from the root FS, but shouldn't SE Linux really run in the init RAM FS as well? Um, isn't that like a security hole? So I don't know, maybe someone can answer that. Uh, can you just put a policy in the NFMFS as well, and will it work? I never really tried this, so it would be interesting to know. Yeah, yeah. Ah, well, voila, there we go, Neil answers it. So, uh, yeah, this is a demo. This will basically, uh, this is a cached build. So we run makeOSI-FQAMU, uh, and it starts building the RPM. Systemd was already built from source one, so it's all cached, and then it just goes on to doing RPM build things, um, it takes a little while. One thing I realized today is that I can probably make it even faster by disabling compression, which I don't do yet. So that's the next thing I'm gonna look into. So uh, you wait a little, a little while, it's producing all the RPMs here now. Now it gets installed into upgraded using DNF upgrade. Uh, some more install scripts, let's. Now we built the initrd. We do the SC Linux relabeling to make sure all the labels are correct for testing. We build a disk image. Uh, we could also build a directory image, but at the point I made this video, I hadn't got an SE Linux working with Verda AOFSD yet. So I was still doing a, a disk image for uh, testing SE Linux. Then we do some dev mods. We make the CPIO for the NRD. And then we boot it in QMO. And eventually it'll boot, and then you can debug whatever uh, is wrong with this. And so this isn't just systemd built with meson, this is a systemd RPM built according to the local RPM spec and the local systemd sources. Um, so you can test whatever you want and then publish it. I think I have one more slide. Zooming, uh, yeah, this was uh, another slide about systemd CD. So, this is how you can select um, the different repositories in MakeOSI. So uh, I can do hyperscale packages main testing and that will contain the builds produced by systemd CD, which is a nightly build of systemd. So I can easily get access to those, rebuild the image, and then I get uh, those versions of systemd installed. And I can do testing against it. 
right? Uh, some links, the official makeOSI repository, and then the specific uh, configuration files that I use for, for doing this. Uh, that was everything. Thanks for listening. And if, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them.